APCO Basic Science video topic, Transgender Care. Transgender people have a gender identity that is different from the sex that they were assigned at birth. Let's start by reviewing some definitions. Gender identity is defined as one's personal experience of one's gender and can differ from their natal sex. A trans man is assigned a female sex at birth but lives and identifies as a man. A trans woman is assigned a male sex at birth but lives and identifies as a woman. People can also be gender non-conforming or non-binary. This is when a person's gender doesn't fit inside the traditional male or female categories. It has been estimated that approximately 0.6 to 1% of the U.S. population, or 1.4 to 2.3 million people, identify as transgender. Several studies have demonstrated significant barriers to accessing primary care. The objectives of this video are to understand the principles of sex hormone synthesis and regulation, to understand the mechanisms and pathways of hormone therapy, particularly as it pertains to the transgender transition, and to develop an understanding of clinical care for transgender patients. To review the physiology of hormonal control and the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian access, please review the APCO basic science video on the menstrual cycle. Let's meet our first patient. He is a healthy 19-year-old trans man who would like to initiate gender-affirming hormone therapy. Let's start by reviewing the function of testosterone and how it is produced in the body. Testosterone is responsible for development and maintenance of the testes, penis, and prostate gland. Testosterone is also critical for sperm development in the Sertoli cells of the testes and is important for the development of secondary male sexual characteristics. How is testosterone synthesized? Testosterone is derived from cholesterol and this process is regulated by LH. The process begins with the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone by P450 side chain cleavage. This is followed by hydroxylation to DHEA by 17-alpha hydroxylase and lastly, conversion to androstenedione dione by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Androstenedione dione is then converted to testosterone by 17-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Let's pause, read, and apply. Where does testosterone synthesis occur in males? In males, the majority of this process occurs in the Leydig cells of the testes, with a very small percentage occurring in the adrenal cortex. It's important to note in the periphery, testosterone can be further converted to dihydrotestosterone by 5-alpha reductase. Dihydrotestosterone is a more potent androgen than testosterone and acts on other tissues such as the prostate, external genitalia, and skin. In addition, some testosterone is converted to estradiol with the enzyme aromatase. Remember this, we will come back to this later. For our patient, the major goal of therapy is to increase testosterone to the male physiologic range Testosterone therapy promotes cessation of menses, as well as the development of secondary male sex characteristics, including increased facial and body hair, voice deepening, clitoromegaly or phallus growth, increased muscle mass, increased libido, redistribution of body fat, and growth and remodeling of facial bone contours. How does testosterone therapy work? Pictured as testosterone in blue, as well as part of a cell with the cytoplasm and nucleus labeled. Testosterone is a lipid and diffuses across the cell membrane to target androgen receptors. Once bound to receptors, they are translocated to the nucleus, where they bind to specific DNA promoter sequences, leading to specific DNA transcription and specific protein synthesis. Other considerations for our patient include monitoring CBC, liver enzymes, creatinine, and initial monitoring of testosterone and estradiol while trying to achieve the desired physiological changes. For trans men who have a cervix, routine cervical cancer screening is recommended. After discussing the effects of the medications, he wonders how the medications can impact his fertility. It is recommended by the American Endocrine Society that all transgender persons be counseled on the effects of transition on their fertility and options for preservation, particularly those who elect to undergo gender-affirming reproductive surgery. For trans men, the effects of testosterone therapy on ovarian function are unclear. Pregnancies have been reported in trans men following prolonged testosterone therapy, yet effects on offspring are unknown. Fertility preservation options include oocyte or embryo cryopreservation. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation is still considered experimental. On the other hand, for trans women, research suggests that prolonged estrogen therapy has damaging effects on testicular tissue. The most successful option for fertility preservation is cryopreservation of semen prior to initiation of hormone therapy. 
Let's meet our second patient. She is a healthy 23-year-old trans woman who would like to initiate gender-affirming hormone therapy. She would like to know how the medications work and what kind of changes will happen. Before discussing hormone therapy with her, it is first important to understand the role of female sex hormones and how they are produced in the body. Estrogens are responsible for developing and maintaining the vagina, uterus, and ovaries. Estrogens regulate the menstrual cycle and also are involved in ovarian function and follicular maturation. In addition, estrogens are important for the development of secondary female sexual characteristics, such as breast development. Like testosterone, estradiol is synthesized from cholesterol. Estradiol is the predominant estrogen during reproductive years and is the most biologically active form of estrogen. Cholesterol is converted to androstenedione through the same pathway as in males. However, unlike in males, in females, this pathway is regulated by LH and occurs 50-50 in the ovarian thecal cells as well as the adrenal cortex. After its conversion, androstenedione is transported to ovarian granulosa cells, where it is aromatized to estrone, and then estrone is converted to estradiol by 17-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. This process of aromatization is regulated by FSH. Your patient would like to know what she can expect from hormone therapy. For our patient, the major goals of therapy are to decrease testosterone and increase estrogen to a female physiological range. It is important to maintain estrogen below supraphysiological levels. With supraphysiological levels, there is increased risk for thromboembolic disease and liver dysfunction. For trans females, goals of therapy can be accomplished using a combination of estradiol as well as antiandrogenic agents. The mechanism of action for estrogens is similar to testosterone. Estrogens, being lipids, enter the cell through diffusion across the plasma membrane. Once inside the cell, they primarily act on nuclear estrogen receptors to mediate gene transcription. Additionally, antiandrogenic agents, such as spironolactone, are often used to inhibit secretion and activity of testosterone, which allows for lower doses of estrogen therapy. Let's pause, read, and apply. What is spironolactone's antiandrogen mechanism of action? Spironolactone's mechanism of action includes being a competitive inhibitor of the androgen receptor and by decreasing androgen synthesis. Let's take a closer look. Spironolactone blocks androgens from binding to and activating receptors. In addition to binding to androgen receptors, spironolactone decreases the activity of 17-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase thereby stopping the conversion of androstenedione to testosterone. In addition, it may also inhibit 5-alpha reductase, which prevents conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. This increases peripheral aromatization of testosterone to estradiol. The higher levels of estradiol promote female characteristics including breast development, redistribution of body fat, softening of skin, and decreasing of body hair, muscle mass, spontaneous erections, and testicular volume. Some other considerations for our patient during the transition include regular monitoring of serum electrolytes, kidney function, and liver function, as well as estradiol and total testosterone levels while desired physiological changes are being achieved. Additionally, for those patients at risk, individualized screening for prostate disease and cancer is recommended. It is important to discuss the risk of increased thromboembolic events with higher estrogen levels, particularly in patients who use tobacco. Patients should be advised on smoking cessation. It is important to note that mammogram is recommended for both trans women and trans men. For trans women, screening mammography is recommended every two years at the age of 50 and after 5 to 10 years of feminizing hormone use. Age-appropriate mammography is also recommended for trans men who have not had mastectomy. She would like to discuss the option of gender-affirming surgery. Trans women and trans men may be interested in gender-affirming surgery. It's important to note that surgery is not necessarily the end point for many trans people that transition. Surgical techniques have improved dramatically in the past 10 years, and the type of surgery falls into two main categories, those that directly affect fertility and those that do not. For trans women, surgery includes gonadectomy, genital surgery, breast augmentation, and or facial feminization surgery. For trans men, surgery includes oophorectomy, hysterectomy, salpingectomy, genital surgery, and mastectomy. It is important that patients are cared for within interdisciplinary teams that include reproductive endocrinologists, psychiatrists and psychologists, 
primary care physicians, plastic surgeons, urologists, and gynecologic surgeons. This concludes the APCO Basic Science video on transgender care. We have reviewed sex hormone synthesis and regulation, as well as the fundamental mechanisms and pathways of hormone therapy. Mm -hmm.